It's important to emphasize here that Omaha Beach was the most casualty heavy area of the initial beach landings. What you see in the film, while inaccurate in many ways, does give the viewer a better grasp on how awful that morning was for the invading troops. Why did Spielberg choose this beach? Was he attempting to give viewers a sense of how hopeless or difficult the place really was? Or was it chosen to make a huge action sequence that allowed for only binary assessments of what was happening? Of course, both points aren't mutually exclusive. It can be both extreme hopelessness and a huge action piece that focused on individuals reacting to heavy violence without equally showing the other side. During the Normandy Beach landings, that more people died in this small sliver of ground that included Charlie Company 2nd Rangers that was actually captained by a guy named Captain Ralph Gornson. Um, and then immediately to their left, I believe, is Alpha Company. 116th Regimental Combat Team, 29th Infantry Division. And I say that because when the scene opens, when they're opening the boats for the first time and Tom Hanks and Tom Sizemore run out there, there are already men from that Alpha Company dead on the beach. Their company was almost completely wiped out in that section. The Rangers did better, but only a little better. And I don't know to put it on Rangers or just they had good leaders and were able to make the most of the horrifying place so possibly just dumb luck absolutely no there there's there's so many different factors that can come into it um one thing that saving private ryan didn't include in the front thing was that there were a couple of incidences of friendly fire that was mainly when uh naval bombardments they were able to signal back to british naval ships and get them to uh, provide them air artillery support and sometimes those, there were misfirings. There were, they hit places where they were actual allied troops instead of, uh, German troops. Um, and they also, um, the troops on the beaches used white phosphorus grenades to clear out the, the bunkers and pillboxes that the Germans were in. I hope I don't need to emphasize to anybody who listen to this podcast, but I'm, I'm going to anyway, how horrifying white phosphorus burns are. And how even after you've been able to get the fire out, which is a chemical fire, one that can't be put out by water. Um, but it's just a, a horrifying thing. But of course, that one, I could see Spielberg easily saying, we're not going to show that. And certainly we're not going to show that happening to any Americans if somebody missed through a grenade. And even though they do show stuff like that um, throughout the film, that it was, they didn't include any of those kind of things. So we're American centric, doesn't include friendly fire doesn't allow us to know about that other company that is being entirely shredded to bits. All you've just said makes me think this sequence is known for being, or at least in our generation anyway, for being like the definitive depiction of combat in it all is. its horrible, brutal glory, etc. And yet everything you're saying says it's actually quite sanitized. Yes. And quite carefully sanitized to give the impression of exactly what they're going for, which is what Spielberg said. He said this ludicrous thing. It's a, a quote I came across when I was reading, I think it was actually Larry Seward's entry on Saving Private Ryan, which is all right. Um, one of the better entries in his not especially impressive book. Um, yeah, anyway, Spielberg said, you know, there's, there have been, I think he said 84 American films that depict combat in war, and this will be the 85th, and it will be the first one to tell the truth. I'm thinking, firstly, you've ripped off this opening from The Longest Day, so that's just bullshit straight out of the can. And I think really how arrogant to say that, and then to avoid some of the real chaotic nastiness of what really happened, some of the real, the real horror show. And instead, it's basically just machine guns, lots and lots and lots of machine guns. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, being hit with an industrial machine gun and having your gut shredded by it is not a good thing. But we don't actually see people dying in the way a lot of people died. It's often quite quick, for one thing. Mm. Yeah, You don't see, apart from the guy who actually has his guts hanging out and he's screaming, and there's, you know, there's a bit of that, but it's kept to a relative minimum. We do just see a lot of people getting hit by bullets and now they're dead. Like the idiot who comes along and takes his helmet off and then is immediately mm -hmm. shot. And it's like, that's such a war movie cliche. That's so, I mean, what were they going for with that? 
were they trying to make it funny? <laughs> it's almost slapstick, given what's going on around them, given all these other people who've died and are dying and are, you know, lying on the beach, missing a leg and, and so on. So, yeah, what you're saying is actually, rather than being the truth about combat, as Spielberg was promoting it, self-promoting, it's actually quite clean, given what truly happened there. <laughs>